Hello everybody and welcome to the CIM Marketing Podcast and today we have a very special guest with us, an award winner, Miss Sarah Crabtree, who is Sales Director of Evoke Classics and she's something of a TV star, so if you're watching on YouTube, you will recognise her probably from Bangers and Cash. Sarah, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's great to have you on the show. It's great to, oh, it's great to be here, thank you. Great for coming so far as well from the Yorkshire Dales. Yeah, yeah, about 18 trains, nine aeroplanes to get here, but it was worth it. And you're now in a sunny cook and box, yeah? Yeah, lovely, what a lovely part of the world. It is, you it are is. You blessed. It is, you've come a long way from one beautiful part of the world to another. Yeah. We're also joined today, I'm glad to say, by Mr Noel Anderson, who is founder of Nerd, Nerd Digital. He's come not quite as far from Beckingham, Kent, but uh, still great to have you, Noel. How are you? Very well, very well. Good Thanks to, for inviting us good on. To, good to have you on the show. Um, Evoke Classics, tell us a little bit about it before we go further. Evoke Classics, we are an online classic car auction company. Um, with a little bit of a difference, we're also more of a community website also, rather than just an auction website. So you buy and sell, it's for people to trade cars? We don't buy and sell, no. We find vendors that want to sell their vehicles and they use our platform, our online services, to sell their cars. You probably hate this stereotype, but are you an auto trader for classics? Um, no, we're much, much more than that. Right. That's very rude. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to find out why. <laughs> I feel we're going to find out why it's so rude. He's planted the seed yeah. nicely oh, there. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> but the interesting thing about this is why you won the award, is that you went from an almost zero digital footprint at, at Evoke Classics to mm. something that is now a digital first, wholly digital business, or nearly wholly digital business. And, I suppose the interesting thing is how you've gone from that position to the new digital position in such a short space of time. Yeah, that's all due to this wonderful man sitting next to me here. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, sure. So, um, Evoke Classics started out life um, with um, that, doing restoration of some classic cars selling some of those on a forecourt. Um, the guys behind that business saw that Sarah was available, contacted her online, yeah. that's right, they isn't did. it? Yeah. With, with a with yeah. a concept, you know, we believe that there is an opportunity for a female led classic car online auction and community, you know. Will you come on board and sort of be the ambassador, the face of that and you know test this hypothesis and see if we can grow it. And um, the guys behind that also recognise that today you need to be very good at digital marketing mm -hmm. and that's the way in which you can reach mm -hmm. that audience first to then hand over to a team that can hand, go give it a much more personal touch. A lot of the auction houses are quite prim and proper and you know there's not there's not you don't really see the people behind it maybe than the person sort of hitting the hammer at the end and that kind of stuff so the community concept was very 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 strong from the start mm. there's a huge classic car community and so for us to be approached you know it did, we went through a, a tender process um but the guys came with a very clear brief mm. from the start can we do this and can we reach these people digitally so our job at the first stage in the sort of tender process if you like was to go away and do our homework and I've got a background in market customer research social media listening and that sort of thing so we went out there and you know can we do this digitally enter the market as a challenger brand and you know the, the, the award was won and it's been a fantastically successful launch so the answer is yes it's amazing though. what's really sort of Noodling my head is the fact that you've gone from you use this word community, so it was lots of so it was all about the personal touch. It was like minded people who had shared a passion for cars coming together, mostly presumably in person. And you had to try to recreate that feeling in yes. the digital sphere. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I got chastised earlier for mentioning auto trading, but that's the most, <laughs> that's the most impersonal yeah. way of buying a car ever. I mean, it, it, it's effective in terms of connecting buyers with sellers, mm -hmm. but it's there's no community feeling. Right. So I'm kind of wondering how you managed to evoke 
excuse the pun, that community mm, feeling in, in the digital space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of little tricks, really, uh, which we learned from you. D you know, simple things like when we send out a newsletter, making it personalised to that person. So every newsletter is written by myself, as if I'm speaking to one person. I never say hi, everybody. You know, it's always to the one person, as if that's that person's getting a. And people actually respond to the. Oh, thanks for letting me know, Sarah. What you're doing this weekend? Right. You know, so they actually do feel that personal touch. Just little things like that, which I think has really helped. There will be loads more, but that's the one that comes to mind. How do you do that? Do you amend the letters? I mean, there's a number of different ways that um, Evoke Classics and Sarah communicate with the audience now, which is, you know, now more than about... It's around 40,000 people that are involved in this community now, which is huge, right? Across all, like, key digital channels. Um, and And... The first thing, people, you know, people are interested in Sarah. People want to know what Sarah's about. She's a, a real advocate for the classic vehicle sector, full stop. And, you know, we were just talking before we, we went online there about a trip where Sarah went from, flew from Ireland with someone who wanted, who's into Fiat. They went to Malta, bought a panda, not the animal, the car. Yes. Yeah. with red and a green number plate <laughs> yeah. and drove all the way back through Europe. Like, you know, there's not many people who do amazing things like this <laughs> and crazy. tell the story, do, you know. And, and so Sarah's out and about all the time. So that personalisation is, is letting people know what's going on in the classic community from someone who lives and breathes it every day. Mm. So you communicate that digitally but the minute that somebody becomes interested in something that's happening at Evoke Classics, the baton is handed over to the people. So it's the, it facilitates that. Mm. And it's one of the reasons why it works so well. And everything is built around that trust. You know, people know, feel like they know Sarah and trust her. And, um, you know, and, and, and so what we need to be able to do is, is project that digitally. And that's the means that people can get involved in the community but it's also handed over to real people and everyone behind the team are experts in that field, live and breathe the brand. So as a digital marketer, you've had to show some really admirable restraint because you could have thought, well, they want a digital platform. Yeah. So you, let's you, digitalise everything. You could have clickbaited this to death. You could have put out some you yeah. know, dreadful ads and mm. oversold it and things. The team and the brief, was, it, it was exceptional from the start. People really clearly had a vision for what we wanted to do. So we just had to rationalise that and see if it was possible. And we did it in steps. So the first thing was to let people know that Sarah was involved in this and we created a little bit of mystery around it. What's mm. Sarah doing next? And so we built out um, some landing pages and did some maybe testing on those just to see what resonated. And, and could we start to build an audience and capture people's emails, details? Um, from that, along the way, people show lots of interest in different things, and we know the different types of things that, that people are like, you know, the different types of cars that they like, the shows that they go to and things. So that's where we're able to, to do the personalization piece, but not for like ill-gotten means. You know, somebody today isn't interested in a classic vehicle, they might be interested in three years' time, and, and it's, it's, it's a long, like, long-term vision for this project. So it's all, you know, it's, it's about knowing as much as we can about the customer, but using that in a, in, a, in, a, in a really positive way in order to, you know, write information at the right time. It's an interesting challenge though, isn't it, as a project, Sarah, because classic cars fans, I'm probably right in saying, are traditionalists mostly. That's why they're into classic cars. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they yeah. love tradition, they love the golden greats, they love history, they're interested in that. And uh, you're trying to take them on this journey to this sort of digital space. Ah, well, we had a little bit of a, a, a little bit of help, really, because when COVID hit, ah. everything kind of went online. Um, so you couldn't go to an attended auction anymore during COVID. So all the auction houses that had what we call a, a, a normal auction house where you attended in person and you stood there and you did your bidding however you wanted to do it. Um, yeah. You know, you couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it's yours, sold. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, you couldn't do that anymore. So all of those auction houses had to change their the way they operated and went online only. So people were used to that. That became the norm way of bidding for a vehicle. So you'd, you'd broken that barrier straight away. The barrier had been broken by the good old pandemic. Right. You know, we, during the, the pandemic, we people had to go online shopping. You know, everything was online. You couldn't go to the supermarket or you didn't want to go to the supermarket. So our way kind of changed, didn't it? The norm for everybody changed. And especially in the classic car industry, when you couldn't go to an auction... They went online and we just thought, well, it's the norm now. People are beginning to get used to this idea. Let's just go with it. So the cro- you, you'd recognise your customers had been forced to cross that Rubicon. Exactly. Because they had no choice. Exactly, yeah. And necessity became the mother invention. And then what yeah. you decided to do was we're going to lean into this. Yeah. But we're not going to completely lose the common touch, the personal touch we had that's before COVID. The, that's the difference that we try to offer or we do offer you know mm. we are constantly um, hand holding our customers which is what we want to do we don't want to just be a tennis match of emails backwards and forwards to a customer i want to pick up the phone and actually speak to that person and you get a real feel for that person that vendor how much they love that car that they want to find a new home for and you build a relationship with that person this person may have owned a car for 50 years yeah. and they're coming to you to sell it why wouldn't they want to speak to a real human mm. who's got some immersion and understands the passion and the upset and everything else that's going to go along with that sale of that vehicle mm. so yeah it's really necessary I find it fascinating from a sort of case study point of view, a business point of view, a sort of marketing, looking at it through a marketing's prism. What you've done there is you, whether implicitly or explicitly, you've agreed to trade something, some efficiency for, for personal warmth. So mm. your brief was originally, we don't want this to be an all singing, all dancing, turnkey solution where nobody has to speak to anybody. Yeah. That was the last thing we wanted. It was completely the opposite. We want to get engaged with people. We want people to come to us and feel like we care. So on the supplier side, you're, on the agency side, you're thinking, this is a genius brief. This is really unusual. Absolutely. So, yeah. Because yeah. presumably, I'm, I'm going to hazard a guess that most of the briefs that come to you are about to size our entire business. Uh, you could say that. There's a, there's a number of those. But yeah. again, that, that comes down to the branding for that particular organisation. And this... This was a, a beautiful example where you could see that the market was there, that you could test a hypothesis to see if that would be accepted by the consumers. Um, coming in, you know, people would never have bought a vehicle online five, no. ten years ago like this. Now, I remember in the early days, you were getting some people sending in emails saying, you know, I'm based out in the middle of nowhere. I can't go and see these people. You know, mm. I can't see these things anymore. Yes. I've loved this type of vehicle for years. You know, and you'd be able to reassure those people that if they made that purchase, it, nothing would go wrong for them that way. And the reviews that you get just reflect that yeah, all the way through. Really good reviews. It, it is interesting, isn't it, that by digitising it, you've actually democratised it you know if you if you if you live miles away if you're maybe infirm or so on and so forth you can't actually do the legwork that you used to have to do because it was a bit like love joy with cars wasn't it the classic car market before you know yeah, shows 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 yeah meeting yeah. vendors and some people are very very precious about their vehicle you yeah. know they don't want to send it off to an auction house right. and let it out of their grasp for a few days you know, with us, with a with an online platform, they're the custodian all the way through the au- the the duration of the auction. So, the car stays with them. They it's still within their site. You know, they don't have to let it go anywhere and worry about it. So the platform's created a really good shop window, which is obviously clearer and more transparent. You can mm. see more through it, but it's also much wider. Presumably, it's allowed you access to a greater customer base. I should imagine. Yeah, it really has, um, and I think. I think our just going back to the reviews, the the just about all of our reviews actually mention communication. Yeah. Don't they? The communication was great. You know, Joanne did this, Sarah said that, blah blah blah. It's all that's what we get. 
recognised for the most and I think that just shows how well it's worked. So what do you think are the key parts of your brand that the thing's captured? Because I, I'm, you know, if you go back to before COVID, you had a brand proposition. It may not have been explicit, but it was something you were known for. You then had to go through a digitisation process. When you were talking to Noel, what were you trying to explain about the key tenets of your brand that have got to go through into the new world, the digital world? They were all about it being hands-on, really, mm. and making sure that we didn't kind of lose sight of that. When we put the tender out and Nose came in, I had to go and meet him. Because, and I think I said to you, <laughs> before we make a decision, I want to see the whites of your eyes. I yeah, want to see yeah. what... A personal kind of, touch. I want, <laughs> yeah. So that has run from day one, that has run through. Yeah. You must have hated COVID, Sarah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, and I did, didn't we? we yeah, I yeah. came down and until yeah. I'd met him and looked in, into the white yeah. of his eyes and seen what kind of a person he was, a decision wasn't going to be made. Yeah. Because that interaction and personable touch just makes everything, I think, really. So... It's you can, priority, number one. It's interesting. That, that is the, ba the core of your brand, really. Yeah, it's yeah. The personal yeah. Tip. The Otherwise, human, we'd have just picked one and gone, yeah, we'll have human you. factor, um, you're the cheapest, we'll take you. Yeah. yeah. Um, how do you communicate to your business when you're talking to your agency and you're trying to get across? This brief's a little bit different from the norm. You know, when th this lady's not asking us to digitise every inch and square foot of her business. She, she is asking us to create a bigger shop window that people can can access, which will connect them to like-minded people. Yeah. And then we, we're the facilitator. How yeah. do you communicate that to, presumably, most of your team are very digital savvy, very digitally minded yeah. people? Well, I mean, everything there needs to be around trust, engagement, and service, effectively. So um, in those early days of testing things out, we did a lot of multivariate testing on um, like with social media advertising and things like that to see which types of images most resonated if that hypothesis was correct, which it turned out to be, right? So it sounds quite you know, fancy <laughs> no, terms no, and all of that. You're not using so, that one. You don't, don't use that one. It was like, picture. you know, <laughs> this is different. And like Sarah, you know, it has her own classic cart. Um, seen out and about in them and images of her like in the showroom immediately people like click with that yes yeah she lives and breathes classic cars you don't get this on any of the other online platforms there's no, no personality there's no human interest it's th yeah. there's no human interest yeah. the car's the star yeah rightly so but yeah. you know, people want that engagement we you know on any good campaigns people buy people first right and so you know that lowered the, the barrier to entry in some ways because Sarah's no but what we needed to know as well is that it, it wasn't just some like quick cheap stunt to get a lot you know we, we equally needed to know that you know, Sarah is passionate about this business and you know is in it for the long run and so you know that that made that a lot easier for us um, and then you know we went through a, a, any sort of standard marketing plan that we put together and um, you know ran through all of those key steps and we're constantly tweaking and changing oh, and yeah, moving it's things forever on. changing isn't and it and it's yeah, yeah. yeah. and there's yeah, new things that we're be. looking to do now yeah. as well and it's you know and it just builds and builds and builds mm. did was anything really surprise you when you looked at the customer responses to some of the things you were doing did you get any real surprises that i before we take on a project i, I need to genuinely feel that there is an opportunity for yep. us to make this work. So again, I'll, I'll look at the size of the market, I'll look at the competition, I'll look at how keywords perform in the different areas. And I had a real, real strong positive feeling that this is going to work. He was very right? excited. Uh, and <laughs> I, don't, I don't get excited about it. And, and so, but, you know, equally, like, to, sort of answer, sweat. to answer your, your question there, once we got a lot of, like, Sarah was, you know, sorry, but you were like, there's no way people were going to sell out, you know, yeah. just send in from social media their cherished vehicles to sell. I was like, 
they will, but it's not until you, you press the send button for the first yeah. time and start yeah. spending your clients' money on, mm. on advertising, outreach, you know, all of these sorts of things that, you know, of course you're a little bit, and you know, you, you, you worry, is this going to work? Um, I mean, it, it was pretty much instantaneous. I mean, we got like vehicles like the Noble came in, which was the yeah. first one to sell, yeah. which is like a classic supercar. Was, you yeah, know, we, we very quickly were able to, to look at um, how we could build up a funnel and what the conversion metrics were for that from, from the um, supply side, if you like. So that, that was, there were a number of different stages. So we needed to know that we could attract the vendors who would like to sell on the platform not knowing it from Adam, the thing never existing. It took a little bit longer to launch because there were a few things we needed to do. We were yeah, looking to launch a little bit the, earlier. With the website. We officially got yeah. the auction open in, in the December. Christmas week. We Christmas week. I was <laughs> Christmas <laughs> Eve doing things. Ah! But it was, it, yeah. it was, you know, it was, I mean, it was exciting and it was really yeah. good. And then, and then the, the vehicle started to, to convert straight yeah. away. And uh, yeah, and that was the beginning. You know, it's been a roller coaster. It's been like a launching a dating service for car owners, isn't it? <laughs> you're, you're trying to you're trying to pull on the heartstrings by yeah. selling this stuff online, so they can meet each other and then make the trade. The guys who um, interviewed the vendors and put the descriptions of the vehicles up as well, they're not flat, dry articles. They you know they put a lot into it as mm. well. So it, so it is, every single one is individual and each one has got that mm. human touch to yeah. it, right? And you Everyone's a love letter to the car. Exactly, and, 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 and that's commented upon and that feeds into the, the sort of core values of the brand as well. So, um, so yeah, scary, will it work? The data from day one said that it would, so I always trusted in that, but yeah, until you press the button, you never quite know, so. You're not humanising digitally, you're digitising human in this project, which is what I find very interesting. And it's a really good model for the people who are trying to do it. I'm going to have to mine your top tips um, for people who want to do a similar project themselves. There's lots of these businesses out there who have you know, law customers, passionate customers, um, hobbyists and so on and so forth, people who live and breathe this stuff and maybe want to open their business out to a... To a um, to a bigger audience, mm -hmm. and connect more people, you know, do yeah. more matchmaking to extend the an analogy. Um, what are your three top tips? Number one, un understand the audience, okay? If you've, if you've got that audience and it's a, a local audience or it could be for a product that you have that you're looking to take an existing product into a new market, you know, do your research first, understand the audience. There's so many different tools out there that you can use to, to find that out. From the smallest, so SEM Rush, Spark Toro, um, uh, uh, you can get access to Neil Patel's tools online to just find out what's going on there. What are people searching for? How much does this happen? What are the websites that people are interested in? You know, find all of this out, model the audience, and you'll very quickly be able to work out if there is a market there. So, so do that. I mean. I, the framework that I learned, I started off with the CIM doing exams back in 2001. I think some of the earliest things I learned are the things that have stuck with me forever. So it's analysis, planning, implementation and control. Evergreen lessons. Right. So, yeah. you know, that number one, analysis is key. If yeah. you just go in blind and launch something, it may well work, but you'll create a lot of problems for yourself. So. Did you know much about classic cars before you went in to this project? Um, interestingly... Not a huge... Well, well I do. Can I just interrupt <laughs> there, actually? Because when... <laughs> when I um, first ever met Noel, he, um, he was chaperoned by his father. Ah, <laughs> Who okay. is a massive classic car. Well, motorcycle and car. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so your dad really yeah, won you so the account. Yeah, so basically... <laughs> Absolutely. I fell in love with his dad. Yeah, 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 and he was yeah. like, I've got to give Noel the gig. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, it, it's... It's probably, it will be the first and the last time, I think, my, my dad, but, it, you know, it worked out. a brilliant wingman, he's, sorry. He's, yeah, I think I need to do it more yeah. often, but I, I just, because my, my, my dad actually rebuilt uh, Triumph Herald 
from my mum and he used to right. be a tool maker and engineer and he rebuilt the engine and he's got a Caterham 7 and he's got some bikes and things like that. So I know about classic cars mm. from that way and I was, I was like, hey dad, I'm, I'm, do you fancy coming along to, mm. to the auction in Ascot? I, I need to meet a you know, prospective client. Oh, come along, come along. Oh, of course, come along. <laughs> Thanks dad. That's a, that's a great, that's a great story. You, you had a little bit of learning. Absolutely, and that obviously helped. A little bit, that but you really, need to do more. It really did help, yeah, because, you know, you've, you've already got an insight into the world of classics. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. You can see the passion from your dad and how he behaves around cars. So you've got an insight into how our customers will behave around cars. Yeah. So. And I, I even bought a, a 20 year old MG off the platform myself, put in a, a bid and got the bid on it for like, I got a great deal. So I, I like to, I like, I, I, where I can, with any clients, I like to sort of live the brand and go through the experience myself yeah. as well. But, um, but I, th I think from, like like agency client relationships, I think where where the, the best ones work, it, it needs to be logical at the start. So mm. so lo logic from our side is can do we genuinely believe we can do this? Yep. Yes or no, right? I think from from, from the, the client side it needs to be do they understand the sector, are they if they can they be passionate about this and you know do they have the skills and the tools and the, mm. the, the backing to do that. So, so I think you've got that logical side and I think we were very closely matched there from the start. The, the next one, arguably the, the most important is the, is the emotional side. You know, we're going, to, we're going on a journey together. Um, you know, can we work with one another mm. and make this work yeah. knowing that there's going to be, you know, tough times and yeah. demands and... Yeah. And then, and then the third one is the, the timeliness of something, you know, is, is this, when is this happening? Is it all planned out? And you know, so all of those three things aligned very, very well for this project. And uh, my dad helped me get it over the line. <laughs> <laughs> the, glorious, the, the glorious pyramids, yes. Yeah. Yeah, heritage business, one that invokes lots of passion. Um, and you're looking to create a sort of digital shop window. From a client's perspective, what should you be briefing? What should you be looking for in an agency? Um, I think I think you've kind of hit the nail on the head with everything that you've just said there. No, really. That passion, that caring, that understanding, the needs. Um, and actually, probably, um, I think I remember you saying, I, I really love, I love what you're doing. And I think that, finding somebody who feels the same about your own job, yeah. you know, because it, there's no point in doing a business unless you actually love what you're doing. Mm. It, you're never going to make it work because you can't, surely. You've got to have that passion there for it. And there's always, you're always there. He's always happy to help or got an idea or enthusiastic. That hasn't waned. That's just fantastic because it could with a lot of companies it's just could just be like oh it's just the paycheck coming in what do they want this time you know but it's not like that with you and I don't ever get that feeling that we're a burden or anything that I ask is like a stupid question we say it on the podcast all the time it shouldn't be clients and pie it's got to be a partnership absolutely is and you're in it together yeah. because when you're working on a project you're all you are going to hit difficult times Sometimes you're not even going to even agree with each other, and that's you know natural. But you, yeah. as long as you're sharing the same passion, exactly, and you're, you're pointing so in the right direction, wrong. that's usually the route yeah. to success. And I think that was detected when, of course, you came in the autumn. I want to say um, to win the CIM award, yes. well, which is no yeah. mean feat. It's tough to win a CIM award. Um, well, it's all down to Earl, isn't it? Really. Well, is it? No, it, 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 it's a true partnership. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, it is, genuinely. And I, I think as well, whilst the brief was clear from the very, very start, we were given the freedom to go away and do things mm. and test and not, it, there's no like restrictions. You know, as long as we all agree what we're going to do, we've been, it's enabled us to be very experimental and, and, and do things that way. So, um, but I think that's probably a two-way thing as well. Yeah. I think if you hadn't shown such passion and commitment, 
we might have been more restrictive. Okay. But because you you are who you are and you've shown us, you know, how excited you were about it, we we were like, yeah, we're just happy to let this guy, he obviously knows what he's doing and he is away with it, it's brilliant. So that's a two way thing, I think. Yeah. yeah. And and the, the award is the icing on the on the cake, because I think I said I started my journey with the CIM back in mm. two thousand one, going through the exams and from chartered and you know getting involved in lots of, of different things um the cpd i've i, I, I did a, a, a distance learning masters which i handed in the day we went into lockdown I, oh. I, I didn't get the time to write it up when we were in lockdown <laughs> thanks for that one so really it's it's you know all of that work all of that journey the, the, getting the award and that buzz is is great but it actually it, it symbolizes uh, you know a, a life dedicated to mm -hmm. learning and, and you know trying really hard to, to you know, take wonderful like new businesses and interesting ideas and bring them to life and, and you know and that's the kind of the, the essence of what we're trying to do at Learn Digital anyway so for us it's you know it's, it's that recognition from as somebody said that's a proper award that is <laughs> probably the Oscars of marketing I mean, it's, it's, no, no mean fit. It, it, it well deserved. And uh, what, a great, what a great story. It's been great to have you on the show today. Thank you. Are you going to come thank back you. on the show at some point? Yeah, of course we will. Tell us yeah. how it's going. Can you, Absolutely. Can you have a helicopter on for a minute, Sandra? <laughs> well, ask it's CIM. It is a long <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Crabtree, Noel Anderson, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.